Good evening. It is 6.30, Tuesday, September 8th, 2020. Board of Aldermen meeting for the City of Kearney. Call the meeting to order. Uh, Shirley, could you take roll? I have taken roll call. Everybody's present and you have a quorum. Okay. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, board, you'll see the consent agenda. Uh, any questions or discussion on the consent agenda this evening? Seeing no questions or discussion, can we entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? I make a motion to approve as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Consent agenda passes. Thank you. Under Mayor's remarks, I do just want to mention that today I had the privilege uh, to meet with Senator Hageman and Representative Ritchie. Uh, we had some good discussions on uh, not only challenges of, of communities uh, in Missouri, but also successes. Uh, really great meeting with us, too, along with our administrator, Jim Eldridge, and Shauna Searcy of the Carnegie Air Development Council. So thanks to Senator Hageman and Representative Ritchie for taking some time to, to meet with, with me uh, while they're in the area. Uh, both of them are great elected officials uh, that are serving us well. We'll move on to the administrator's report. Mr. Mayor, uh, we have received very competitive bids uh, with uh, for the Dogwood Sidewalk Project, which connects a sidewalk on Cedarwood Parkway to Dogwood Elementary. Uh, from both the Cedarwood subdivisions and the Hills of Westwood subdivisions. The city is receiving a grant uh, MoDOT, from MoDOT for 80% uh, of the project up to $180,000. Uh, so we are right now only going to claim $144,300 of that total grant. Um, it's very difficult to change the project scope to go outside of the, the area. Uh, so if that, that's not necessarily possible, but we may be able to enhance uh, the, some of the improvements that we're gonna do. For instance, maybe the, uh, uh, the type of striping we put down on the crosswalks might be uh, um, more of the vinyl type rather than just spray paint or something like that. We'll, we'll be mindful of trying to claim all of that uh, that, 80, that that grant, uh, uh, but enclosed in the uh, or, uh, the agenda is an ordinance authorizing a contract with the low bidder, Mega Industries. Mega constructed the Prospect sidewalk uh, back in 2017. They did a very fine job with that. We're, we're, it still continues to look uh, look good, uh, and uh, we're, we were pleased with with how we got along with them on that. So we recommend approval. And that is enclosed in 4A, Mr. Mayor. And if you'd allow me to read by title only, I'd like to uh, seek the board's consideration and approval. Yes, if you could read 4A, the ordinance by title only, please. An ordinance authorizing the city administrator to sign a contract with Mega KC for construction of the Dogwood Elementary Sidewalk Project, TAP 3457-404. Or can we entertain a motion for the ordinance? Make a motion to approve. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Second read. Second reading by Todd Only, please. An ordinance authorizing the city administrator to sign a contract with Mega KC for construction of the Dogwood Elementary Sidewalk Project, TAP 3457-404. Recommend approval on second reading. I second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, you, uh, poll, the, the board is uh, Alderman Spencer? Aye. Alderman Holt? Aye. Alderman Lehman? Aye. Alderman Barger? Aye. The vote is unanimous, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And thank you, thank you board. Uh, I do want to advise you all that because of the good pricing, we are asking Mega for a, a price to extend the sidewalk 1,100 feet, which is outside the uh, the scope, uh, to the Cottonwood subdivision. 
uh, we're going to look and see if we can figure out how to how to justify that, uh, you know, and how much that's going to cost. So that would be actually a, a outside the contract of this of this contract. So we're we're going to have to do some uh, some some kind of an arrangement with them for that, and as well as we're going to we've also provided them with a copy of the plans for the 19th Street. Blue Sky Gardens connection that uh, is a, essentially a also a, a street crossing, uh, and so uh, they have that those exact same kind of line items in the same project. But I can't I can't uh, tack that onto the contract. It'll have to be kind of a separate standalone using the same pricing. So we're hopeful we, if we can tally these up and figure out if there's still enough money in the till to do all those, we'll, we'll come forward with that. But it's a it's a good opportunity uh, because Mega knows how to build a sidewalk pretty well as far as I'm concerned. So right, one is right and yeah. wonder why they're in the area. Hopefully we can figure that out. Yeah, I think the opportunity to enhance the connectivity of our sidewalks is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, Mr. Mayor, we have uh, Nathaniel Thomas with us from Accounting Solutions. Uh, he uh, is prepared to present the audit for the city's finances uh, over the period of fiscal year 2020 ending March 31st. A draft copy of that is enclosed in 4B. And, I, and uh, Ryan, I hope we uh, have, have got it on share so he can share screen and uh, because I think he'll uh, want to use that ability to show and work us through the document. Uh, and uh, so, if, Nathan, if we can turn it over to you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Jim, for that introduction. Uh, Mr. Mayor, board, good to be with you guys this evening. Uh, my business partner, Rob Wilson, is uh, on the call as well, but I will be running point for the presentation. So as Jim alluded to, we've concluded the audit for the fiscal year 2020, which ended March 31st, 2020. Uh, we've already had the opportunity to have a call with the mayor, uh, city administrator, and various department heads last week, and we went over the audit report you have in, in front of you in detail. Uh, so what we're hoping to accomplish today is go up through it at a high level, uh, seeking the board's approval to issue the final signed audit report for fiscal year 2020, and then some relevant date deadlines that we have here on the horizon. Uh, the primary one from an accounting standpoint would be with the state auditor's office, uh, six month requirement, which was September 30th. So we've got plenty of lead time there. And then I know Jim has spoken with Gilmore and Bell. They're always interested in getting a final issued audit report and they've been made aware of uh, our presentation this evening and uh, issued copy to, to follow. So if you'll turn with me to page four, please, the audit report you have in front of you. And I am gonna share my screen at this moment and uh, kind of drive along as we go, make, try to make it ease of use uh, for everyone on the call. Uh, Jim, Jim, can you quickly confirm that you've got my screen? I do, and if you want to maximize that to, uh, to make it as big as possible, we'll welcome that. Absolutely, yes, sir. All right, so uh, page four of the audit report, the opinion paragraph, uh, not going to read it in total, but it, it states that the financial statements referred to uh, in this report are presented fairly in all material respects, and the financial position of the governmental activities, business type activities, and each major fund for the city of Kearney as of March 31st, 20 is accurate. This is a clean or an unmodified audit opinion, which is what uh, you were looking for when you engage an independent third party audit firm such as ours. So the city of Kearney has a good clean set of books, keeps great financial records and has accomplished that clean unmodified opinion. Uh, turn with me to page seven. Page seven, and I'm referencing the page numbers on the bottoms of your printouts for those of the, you that have it in front of you. Page seven, statement of net position. So this is uh, shows two columns, right? We got a governmental column, we've got a business type activities column, which of course is water and sewer, and then we've got a total. I'm really going to hit on this uh, in terms of the financial position of the city of Kearney in total, uh, with kind of just a few talking points about some of the movements year over year. So if we start in the assets section, at the end of the year, we've got 46.6 million in assets, and that's up 1.1 million dollars year over year. And cash, it consists of cash of 10.5. Uh, that is down 4.5 million. But the reason cash is down is because substantial investments were made in the capital asset categories. Assets not being appreciated or land, 1.3 million. Assets being depreciated, that's your infrastructure, improvements, machinery, and equipment, 32.5 million. So I can tell you that capital assets increased year over year, 4.7 million. 
the big driver there was the sewer plant headworks building and equipment uh, invested in that line item uh, within the fiscal year to the tune of about 3.9 million. Moving on to liabilities, we've got 24.6 million in liabilities. That is down 1.7 million year over year, uh, which is the, the direct result of obviously having debt service on the different debt instruments, the go bonds, uh, leases payable and the like. Uh, so total uh, long-term obligations are shown in two categories. Amounts due in less than one year, we'd call that current. That's a combination of sick leave payable as well as one year debt service, the next 12 months year debt service on the debt obligations of 2.3 million. And then we've got long-term, so due over those 12 months or past those 12 months of 21.1 million. And like I said, those were down 1.6 million year over year, as you'd expect, you continue to make the payments and there were no new issues in that, in those categories. Probably most importantly, net position at the end of the year, total net position for the city of Kearney, 22 million. That is up 2.8 million year over year. Uh, we've got a couple different categories. If you're going down the, the governmental column here, you've got 3.4 million invested in capital assets. You've got various restrictions. Uh, the two biggest being for debt service of 2.26 million, followed by 760,000 and change for public works and then unrestricted as the name implies, those are kind of free and clear to use for any future purposes, 4.3 million. The middle column business type activities of the same in the net position section, the very bottom, 7.6 million in capital assets, 3.4 million unrestricted for a total of 11 million. So like I kind of said, it was a, I'm gonna press pause from the actual face of the financial statements real quick and just kind of high level, Strong year, uh, cash was managed very well. I mean, anytime you can continue to invest at a very high clip in, in capital assets, as well as pay down uh, your debt service and continue to grow net assets or net position for the city of 2.8 million, that's, that's a win across the board. So that was a, a very good financial result, uh, high level when we look at it that way. Page eight, the next page. Okay, eight. I'm going to go to the bottom right corner of it. And again, for those of you on my screen, I'm going to try to highlight it for you a little bit as I go through here. Change in net position, bottom right. That's that 2.8 million I, I hit on on the face of a statement of net position. 958,000 of that was for water and sewer, leaving 1.88 million for general government. If we just kind of hit on water and sewer, because it's probably the most user-friendly in this view. If I go from the middle of the page, kind of working left to right on the business type activities, water and sewer, I've got 3 million in expenses for the year for water and sewer, 3.9 million in uh, revenues for charges for services, that nets to about 900,000. And then the only other line item, if you follow that column down to uh, the total of 11 million was 34, excuse me, 45,000 in interest income to arrive at that $958,000 increase uh, in net position for water and sewer. As we move to general government, uh, staying in that bottom right quadrant, uh, you've got general revenue in the form of taxes, your three big line items, as we all know, sales tax 5.5 million, property taxes 1.6, and franchise taxes just north of 800,000. Then moving to the upper left of this uh, presentation, I'm gonna be in the expense column, staying all in primary government. So in the expense, we had 8 million, just north of 8 million, in uh, expenses for the year, 973,000 in charges for services. Uh, I think it is of note that uh, interest on long-term debt was 333,000 within the year. So that flows down to the very bottom in the governmental activities column on the right side of the page. When added to all your revenue line items, including those tax totals I gave you, that's that 1.88 million uh, increase for a balance of 11 million of net position at year end. Page nine, page nine. This is a uh, balance sheet for governmental funds. This is basically the feeder document. We, we start at the highest summary level, then we go in down through de uh, various detail levels as we work our way through the report. This is the governmental balance sheet. I can tell you these are the same numbers you've got on page seven, statement of net position, uh, with the exception of this view doesn't have capital assets represented in the assets section. It doesn't have long-term debt obligations and liabilities and it doesn't have any of your uh, net pension assets or, or long-term loggers pension uh, related items on this view uh, just from a different accounting presentation, but everything else is the same. 
page 10 is the reconciliation of those two views. So the reconciliation of page seven to page nine as we uh, look at the two different views of governmental funds. And as I stated, everything is related to capital assets, long-term obligations or pension uh, related items. Page 11. Page 11 is a statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance for governmental. You can kind of see where I'm headed there. Again, capital assets aren't here. They're shown as uh, expensed and actually flow through the various lines uh, by department uh, in the expense section. Uh, there's no depreciation because in this view, capital assets haven't been uh, capitalized and depreciated. And then lastly, principal payments on debt service are shown as expenditures uh, for those disbursements rather than paying down a liability um, on page 11. Page 12 is the reconciliation of page eight to 11, which again, uh, statement of activities, really just everything, capital assets, depreciation and the like. And then page 13 is statement of net position for water and sewer fund. Uh, this is identical dollar for dollar to the view you saw on page seven. Uh, business type activities, water and sewer being one, are always shown on full gap or accrual basis. Uh, so these are dollar for dollar the same as what we went through. Page 14, same thing, just the activities for water and sewer, again, ties to the water and sewer columns uh, back on page eight. And then page 16 for the last kind of high level view, this is the statement of assets and liabilities of agency funds. Uh, definition of agency funds is money's held by the city uh, for other entities. It's not actually the city's money. So at any point in time, this point in time, of course, being fiscal year end, uh, you can kind of see Municorp 2,400 there, uh, CIDs 847. So at year end, 914,000 were held and none of the activities for these different funds run through the city's books, but this is just a snapshot view of at that point in time, uh, what's there. Uh, at this point, I'll move forward to the notes to the audit report, uh, but did want to pause real quick. Do, do, does anyone on the board uh, have any questions uh, for the financials as you've seen them to this point? Any questions from the board? No. Wonderful. Moving forward, page 25, if you turn with me to 25, please. All right. Page 25, I am under the compensated absences header. Uh, I made reference to it in the long-term obligations on a uh, statement in that position, but just wanted to make sure everybody was clear on, on what's kind of in that number. We've got two different categories, of course, govern, government and proprietary. And the government at year end, this last line here, at year end, uh, cumulative liability balance for uh, sick leave payable was 533,000 for government funds. And then for the water and sewer, the proprietaries, uh, the same. Uh, sick leave payable was 111,000 at your end. Page 28. Page 28, the very top of page 28, note one, uh, I think it is meaningful just to kind of see what was the breakdown of cash and cash equivalents. Deposits, as you think of them, of, you know, standard checking accounts and money market accounts, 8.4 million at your end, CDs just shy of 750,000, and then bond reserves of just shy of 1.4 million to total 10.4 uh, 562 million in cash and cash equivalents at year end. Page 29. Page 29, the very top of page 29, note three long term debt bonds. Uh, I'm going to work through the total column there. Beginning of the year, 11.585 million, uh, 860,000 in principal payments on those uh, debt obligations to arrive at a balance of 10.725 million at year end. And then very closely related to those on page 30, the very, um, oh, excuse me, I'm skipping over, I am page 30, but page 30, uh, I don't want to hit on these in detail, but I can just tell you that for every debt obligation there is out there, we've got an amortization schedule, uh, which is presented, I'll use this 2015 go bonds as an example, uh, per year debt service principal and interest breakdown for the next five years, and then five year groupings after that to arrive to the balance on each one of those obligations. So that's what page 30 is, those three. And then as we go to page 31, the very top of page 31, note four. So for capital lease obligations payable, reconciling to the beginning of the year, governmental 1.6 million, principal payments on those of about 240,000 to arrive at year end of 1.378 million. Business type, start the year at 11.236, 490,000 in principal on it, no new issues, and then 10.745 million. And again, those all tie back kind of to the face of the financials. 
page 33 is the only um, individual one of those I really wanted to hit on the very top of 33 amphitheater. Uh, this was actually paid off during fiscal year 2020. We've got the note there just to state that, to be honest with you, um, and that'll roll off next year, but everything else kind of has the amortization schedules as I had told you in five-year groupings. Page 40, if you'll turn with me to page 40, please. All right, page 40, page 40, note five, pension plan. Uh, City of Kearney participates in uh, two pension plans, both through loggers, uh, one, ge one general and one police. Uh, this is a combined view of those two pension plans for the city. Uh, I will tell you that the actuary, uh, excuse me, loggers hires an actuary to do an actuarial valuation annually. Uh, that always occurs as, occurs as of uh, June 30th. So here you're finding it reconciled from June 30th, 18 to June 30th, 19, because that was the most recent actuarial valuation within the fiscal year. Uh, really just relevant to hit on this in total. Entered the year up here, upper right column, 674,000. That's a net pension asset. Said another way, um, the, the net position of the pension plans for the city of Kearney with loggers uh, had assets in net position in excess of the projected act, uh, net pension liability uh, to the tune of 674,000. So there was a surplus there. That surplus continued within the year at the very bottom uh, two lines, net changes, uh, grew that surplus by 123,000 to arrive at a surplus uh, in the net pension assets of just shy 800,000, 797,000. Uh, so we've said it in this forum in the past, uh, continues to be a strong uh, position, uh, net, you know, driven by really great market returns. Uh, you can see right here, 495,000 in investment return within the year. But again, as we kind of know, as it relates to pension and anything investment heavy, uh, it is really dependent on the market, the return on those investments continuing to contribute, uh, you know, at a proper uh, rate. So the, probably the biggest impact year to year for the city of Kearney is that because you have continued to be in such a strong surplus situation, your uh, pension contribution rate has continued to decrease every single year. We've kind of been playing that game for a while, which is great. And it, it should continue. It will continue to do that. Uh, you know, until um, anything changes in that regard or, or if that surplus were to change. But for right now, everything looks fantastic in that regard. Page 45 of the report. Page 45, note 11, the very top of page 45. A uh, couple things here. This, what this is doing is comparing uh, the value of your cash deposits on hand in uh, banking institutions uh, versus the pledge securities, which are required, as well as FDIC insurance on those bank accounts. Uh, so in summary, you've got not just north of 9 million, 9.16 million in deposits covered by FDIC or the collateral held by the city. You've got FDIC of 250, pledge securities of 11.4 million for a total of 11.67. So you have insurance and pledge securities uh, in excess of deposits of 2.5 million, again, as of March 31st, 20 but uh, incredibly strong position there, no concerns, uh, nothing to report to the board. Uh, definitely protected in that regard. Page 47, page 47, note 14. Uh, a lot of numbers on this page, I'm just gonna hit it on total. Uh, this is a detailed kind of reconciliation. It's not detailed, right? It's not line item assets, but it is detailed in terms of the categories. You've got governmental up top, then you've got business type in the middle, and then you've got total depreciation on the bottom. Uh, it, it shows your categories, infrastructure, buildings, improvements, where you can see beginning of the year with the additions reconciled to the end of the year, all to tie back kind of to the face of the financials. But at the very bottom, the two relevant numbers, I believe, uh, are depreciation expense for governmental activities on the year of 625000 So as we know, depreciation is a non-cash item. Um, but it is nice that you can run through 625,000 in depreciation expense and still have such a positive year uh, from a results standpoint. And then business type activities, water and sewer, 468,000 in depreciation for the year. Um, I, I can tell the board that kind of the back end of the report are really supplemental schedules. Like I said, we start at the, the highest summary view and then it gets more detailed as we go through. I don't believe you need to turn there, but I can tell you that pages 55 through 58 are supplemental schedules by fund uh, for general government. So the different funds that roll up to general government as well as non-major funds. Uh, then you've got page 59 through 64 are supplemental schedules by fund, which are budget to actual comparisons. 
And then the last two pages of the report, pages 65 and 66, are supplemental schedules for uh, the loggers' pension plans, which is kind of shipped, are building out a 10-year history, and it's got five years uh, of detail there. Um, so, uh, as I kind of said in the open, you know, we've completed the process. Obviously, um, we've got a report in front of you. We are seeking the board's approval on that. Uh, the way that typically works, obviously, is is uh, motion and approval. You guys know how that works. But then there are two other letters that would close out the process is where I'm headed. Uh, that once we get approval from the board, uh, I call them management letters. I've actually got them right here. One is from the, the board or the city to us, just basically stating that they believe, uh, you guys believe we've completed the audit as engaged, uh, and it will close out the audit process. Um, and then the uh, the one that you may be more interested in, the, the letter from us, the firm, uh, to you, the city of Kearney. Uh, I can tell you that the, the two things that are identified, the two points that are identified, uh, I'll just read through them with you here. Um, it's that we end up preparing the financial statements, the related notes, to the audit report, and packaging it all up for you. And then the second one being that um, obviously there's a limited number Sorry, I see a couple of you guys squinting. I'll make this a little bit bigger for you. <laughs> uh, we, Given the size of the staff, accounting and finance, right? Everybody does a great job. You've got more than qualified people, but it is difficult, um, you know, with the number of headcount you've got doing accounting finance functions, obviously with Jim's oversight, uh, to kind of have that separation of duties or segregation of duties to use kind of that buzz term of how you would differentiate one person opens the mail, one person makes a deposit, one person you know, enters it in the software, one person takes it to the bank, and then different levels of approval on up that chain. Um, these are, I'll be honest with you, these are the exact same two it, um, points that we've put in this document in the past. Um, in a government environment, which we are in, uh, it asks for a response, which we've prepared, and basically it states that um, no change is expected one, we in good conscience definitely would not advise you to invest in an additional uh, human resource with the cost that would be associated with that just for the sake of preparing the audit report. Because quite frankly, the expectation is really that, um, you know, the entire 66 pages are done by you or somebody internal uh, that we just basically come over the top, review it, make sure it's right. And we know that's not the situation we're in. We've been engaged to do the accrual conversion, uh, record the debt service payments, you know, and 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 take that down uh, against the the debt obligations, uh, capitalize the the capital asset additions, and maintain depreciation, that type of stuff. So it's all perfectly normal uh, in the in a governmental environment. It's all perfectly acceptable. Clearly, it didn't impact our uh, opinion on the report. It is that clean, unmodified opinion. And last thing I would say on that note is that uh, this is an internal document. Uh, obviously, the city's uh, got public records and, and such, but um, you know, you externally really shouldn't have to provide this to anybody. Nobody should re, uh, be requesting it. Um, but it is something that we, by our professional standards, are required to prepare. So, with that said, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, I'll turn it over to you and I'd be uh, absolutely uh, happy to answer any questions that anybody on the board has or uh, have any dialogue necessary. I don't have any questions, board. Any questions or discussion from the board? Nope. If there are no questions from the board, uh, we uh, entertain a motion to uh, authorize the audit in its final form. I make a motion to authorize the audit in this final form. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I just need the one motion. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, that, that motion does it. And, and uh, Nathan, very, thank you very much for joining us. And can you unshare your uh, screen back to us now? Yes, sir. I believe and I've accomplished I, that. <laughs> I sure thank you guys for, for uh, sharing on that. And uh, we will uh, get uh, the management, let's see, the, the, the management letter uh, signed and turned around to you. Is that what, yes, what it is? And, yep, uh, you're, you're right, Jim. And then uh, just for your peace of mind, we will, uh, now that we've got that approval, we will issue and uh, by first thing tomorrow, if not later tonight, you'll have the signed report, okay? Thank you very much. All right. Thank you all. Bye. Mr. Mayor, we have with us Megan Miller of Gilmore and Bell. 
uh, who is attending by Zoom to answer the board's questions concerning the authorization to issue the balance of the city's bond authorization for the purpose of constructing the I-35 interchange. Uh, enclosed in 4C is that proposed ordinance. Uh, it is a um, planned bond sale of uh, date of September the, the 15th. And uh, we are marching on uh, straight, trusting that everything is going to fall in place and we're going to be uh, bidding in November uh, for, for the project. And uh, I don't know any other way to look at that. Do you, Megan? No, I mean, that's, that's exactly right. This is the, uh, the final installment of um, uh, bo general obligation bonds that you, uh, the city had authorized back in 2018. Uh, I believe, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, that was a, 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 a $4.3 million bond issuance in 2018. Uh, this is 3. the remaining 5. 20. Yeah, that's right. And this is the remaining 20 million. Um, and so in front of you is uh, the ordinance that um, approves the official statement, approves the sale. This is a parameters sale. So um, within the ordinance is a set of parameters like we've, we've done before uh, that have to be met before um, a sale can be completed. Uh, there is premium that's going to be generated on these bonds, um, which uh, just... Uh, it it, it um, increases your principal amount, but I mean, it does, tra it will translate into um, higher uh, principal payments in the end, but I mean, that's, that's to be expected. So does anybody have any questions? I think we're all trusting our bond council and financial advisor to take us through this project and uh, we're trusting that MoDOT will get some good bids for this project. So, Mr. Mayor, if you'd like me to read by title only, it's uh, enclosed in 4C. You have to turn a few pages. Not the middle, past the table of contents. If you're not tabbed, uh, it, it, there's a page right at there it is. the next page. Gotcha. Uh, yes, we could, uh, for any questions for uh, Mrs. Miller, our council. If no questions, uh, if you could uh, read by title only. An ordinance authorizing and directing the issuance, sale, and delivery of not to exceed $20.8 million principal amount of general obligation bonds series 2020 of the City of Kearney, Missouri, and authorizing certain other documents and actions in connection therewith. Or can we entertain a motion to pass the ordinance? I make a motion to pass this ordinance. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Second reading by title only, please. An ordinance authorizing the issuance, sale, and delivery of not to exceed $20.8 million principal amount of general obligation bond series 2020 of the city of Kearney, Missouri, and authorizing certain other documents and actions in connection therewith. Make a motion to approve on second reading. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Please pull the board. Alderman Spencer? Aye. Alderman Holt? Aye. Alderman Lehman? Aye. And Alderman Barger? Aye. Vote is unanimous, Mr. Mayor, and thank you very much. Uh, next item of business is I, I want to report to you that we have met with Assured Partners Incorporated um, and proposed and uh, want to de designate them as agent of record for the city's property and casualty liability uh, and workman's compensation. Uh, just as we changed brokers for the city's health insurance to the Bucati Agency, We'd like to give Assured Partners the opportunity to assist the city in handling insurance risk matters for the city. We will be going to market this year, and we will also be inviting a proposal from the Murma Insurance Risk Pool, which uh, they gave us a proposal back in 2013. Uh, Dan was on the board probably, and Jerry may have been there as well. Um, <coughs> And uh, although we chose one beacon that year, uh, we uh, 
we did, uh, you guys sent me down to uh, one of their seminars and I've learned more about them and um, Platte City has, has found uh, them to have good experience with them for the last several years and so I'm telling you that because we'll have a broker that brings uh, several private uh, sector bids and then we'll have Murma who doesn't work through any broker come to us with some bids and uh, so we'll be working with those uh, and probably it'll be December before we get all that but I have enclosed information concerning Assured Partners. Uh, we're breaking our relationship with Hub which used to be Heartland, which used to be Kretcher Lynch and uh, so uh, these folks uh, have a strong network across the country and they are experienced in municipal uh, services as well. So I uh, wanted to bring that to your attention. There's no necessary action, just inform you that that's what we are, are proposing to do. And uh, now uh, under 4E, Mr. Mayor, um, on further checking, the Southview siren was found to be a three-phase motor. Well, this is an ancient siren anyway, and to, do a, to move it to another location where three-phase service isn't available, it costs a lot of money to run that, so it's just not worth doing. And so uh, we are coming back to you and saying, hey, uh, um, can we go ahead and uh, increase the budget uh, up to $12,045 to uh, go ahead and purchase another one of those used federal sirens? And I, these are the same kind of sirens we have in our town, and they're rotating and and they have, uh, they're, uh, they're, they've been relieved from other communities because uh, some communities have appropriated more money to go to voice where they can actually talk uh, to people, which I think is kind of crazy, but that's just me. <laughs> and uh, as far as I'm concerned, it frees up uh, a, a siren that would cost well over $20,000. We can buy them much cheaper and uh, will give us a good long life. Has this been refurbished or is it just... Just used. It's, it's used, and um, it, it also comes with a metal pole. So, so that, that's that's what you know. Uh, that, uh, that that's what makes it also valuable. Is it comes with a galvanized pole, uh, and so uh, uh, it's. Uh, we think it's a good good value. Blue Valley is the federal signal uh, contractor in our area. They have uh, cooperative purchasing contracts with the Mid America Regional Councils. Um, cooperative purchasing group and so we have a high degree of confidence that their pricing is good although the mayor pointed out he says boy we ought to be in the siren business because it seems like a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> however you are all been you gave me the feeling that you would support such a move to to go ahead and and strengthen our siren system throughout our community and this this will help greatly uh, we would put place this one at the uh, probably at the uh, senior citizen complex where it'll even have some overreach uh, to the Church of Annunciation and the Fun Farm and, um, and just give, that, give James Point a solid uh, coverage, which we've, we've understand that interstate noise creates an ambient constant noise of about 70 or 80 decibels just living next to the interstate. So they need, they need an extra uh, boost, I think, and I think this will give it. What's the closest one to them right now? Annunciation. Um, well, we have one on the top of the hill at at uh, Jesse James Park, and uh, you know where that at the pavilion, and then the one downtown be behind the fire station. So, so we do have a tiny siren right here at uh, at, at the firehouse, but it if you look at the uh, coverage map, it's not intended to get very far with its with its volume and so really uh, the firehouse is the closest siren I think. And this is the area that's been identified by our emergency management director that needs some attention as well so. So I'm asking for a board motion to uh, authorize an amendment to the budget and to authorize the purchase of this uh, siren uh, from Blue Valley. Uh, Any other questions or discussion from the board? I think the safety of our citizens is always a top priority, so this is good. <laughs> you entertain a motion? 
I make a motion to approve this. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, board. I appreciate that. Um, also want to report to you all that uh, we uh, uh, have a, a bid date for Reliance Park of September the 25th. Uh, here in a couple of days, we'll be having a bid meeting. Uh, Larry, uh, with Larry Reynolds with Vireo reports that they have 15 contractors that have made inquiry. Eight are plan holders, so that's pretty strong interest. Hoping that results in a favorable. Yes. <laughs> and Mr. Mayor, that concludes my report to you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to public requests and petitions. Uh, item 5A. Mr. Mayor, uh, I, I, I've contacted you all over the weekend. Uh, Cheryl Giambalvo uh, reached out to us uh, through Tim Harris, I think, and uh, and said, hey, we want to open up on uh, today. And so uh, we asked that the board uh, and shared that with the, our newspaper uh, that, we, that we were asking for that. And you all came back independently and said, I'm going to support that. And so... Um, I, I, for the record, uh, I will acknowledge that you guys gave us consent, uh, unanimous consent to proceed, and we have processed that liquor license application based on the board's authority. So uh, we do have, uh, under 5B, uh, Jerry Roberson, uh, Roberson with us, and maybe Pete Ember Emerson. Uh, they are uh, in the process of negotiating an acquisition of, of uh, Gino's Italian Cuisine. We understand that Gino intends to remain an employee and sort of the, the, the face of the business, hopefully the, vo the voice of the, the vocal of the business, <laughs> maybe. Maybe you can uh, fill us in on that, uh, uh, Pete. Can, can, can you, uh, Jerry or, or Pete, uh, sing? Do we make that a requirement of their, their application? Pete, approval? unmute there. Uh, unmute, Pete. <laughs> can, we, can you guys unmute? Yeah, they go. All right. Are you able to hear me there? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Sorry about that. I'm learning Zoom today. So, um, <laughs> Mr. Mayor and ladies and gentlemen of the board, uh, my name is Peter Emerson, and uh, Jerry is on here as well. Um, Jerry and I have been working hand in hand with, uh, with George and Julie. Uh, regarding the um, the Gino's restaurant, and um, after talking, George does want to stay on. Um, Julie's been wanting to retire and kind of go and help her uh, her son with his security company. So uh, we were working out a way for Jerry and I to purchase the restaurant. Um, we don't want to change anything with it because the restaurant's fantastic and it's not broken. Um, it's actually it's very good. Um, George never wanted to stop. He just, um, Julie kind of does all the books and the paperwork and everything. And I'm a banker by trade. And Jerry is a, um, Jerry's been in the restaurant business for well over 30 years. And so the two of us wanted to step in and purchase the restaurant and then work with George to grow it um, and take it to its next level. So that's, um, it's, Pretty much the, the goals we had. Um, we, we have a, a lot of things we want to do as far as bringing in coffee and some other um, some other items to, to be able to enhance it. But um, we didn't really have any intent to change things as far as George walking the floor and singing. Um, I know that tends to be something people look forward to. And uh, um, as I was reading in the reviews, it seems like the menu items were very much in demand. So. Um, our goal was not really to to modify it much at all. Well, Mr. Mayor, uh, I, I did mention to to Pete uh, that uh, they, because it's a kind of a special business to us uh, being downtown, and that, that uh, I wanted them to see you all to see his face. We don't generally uh, ask too many questions of the of the applicant. They they have a clean record. Uh, the only thing that's slightly unusual is we don't have a uh, Clay County residents until Jerry gets moved here, uh, but but he is uh, asserting that he's going to be a Clay County resident, which is in compliance, and uh, their records are impeccable, and we recommend approval. Any questions, comments from the board? If not, board, uh, we entertain a motion to approve the uh, 
Gino's liquor license request. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, uh, uh, Pete and Jerry, for attending. Uh, and we'll Thank you. look forward to you working with you in the future. Yeah, welcome to Carney. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, at this point, we'll move to public hearings. We do have a public hearing scheduled this evening. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, as was authorized with the adoption uh, of the uh, fiscal 2021 budget, a public hearing has been scheduled to consider a 5% uh, rate increase on both water and sewer uh, rates. In 2017, Larkin and Lamp Rynearson conducted a uh, water and sewer rate study to evaluate revenues and operational expenses with a focus on future capital improvements for the water and sewer systems. Uh, essentially, the recommendation was 5% annual increases in the water rates and 20% annual increases in the uh, sewer rate uh, to be implemented over a five-year period. Uh, the combined total uh, of the rate would uh, approximately be 10% 10, 10 per year. While the board implemented the first increase in 2018, they did not fully implement the 2019 increase, noting that the full sewer uh, increase is intended for future sewer plant capacity expansion uh, and, and didn't actually have to be done immediately. Uh, nor is the full recommended increase being sought for 2020 either. We are uh, recommending that, uh, that it's a, a we call it a 5% increase. It's really it's technically a net 4% increase because we're not increasing the monthly service charge of $5. It would stay flat at, at, five, at, at $5 per month. And uh, we recognize because uh, that is the first step in, uh, in anyone's rate uh, that uh, uh, for, the, for the small user and for the senior, uh, we we still are trying to keep our costs lower, so uh, you know that's uh, th that's kind of how we're doing the rate structure. We've included with the packet a copy of the water and sewer rate study. Uh, we uh, are submitted into evidence for this for this public hearing. Uh, we also submit our our uh, 2021 budget into the record for. Uh, uh, to substantiate the need and identify why we would be asking for those rate increases. And um, I think that pretty much covers it if you'd like to open the floor to pu public comment. Yeah, at this time, uh, we will open the floor for public comment. If you uh, would like to speak for or against the proposed 5% water sewer rate increase, uh, now is the time. Uh, please come forward or raise your hand on Zoom. State your name and address for the record. Seeing no one move, I will close the floor. Any questions or discussion from the board on uh, the proposed increase? Jim, one thing that since I'm new to the board, do we have any idea when the next major improvement to the sewer plant would be? I I wish I could tell you that. We, we, we want to forestall that as long as possible. That would be the treatment basins, uh, and, and we've, we've been looking and talking to the engineer about adding a single giant treatment basin that, that would be, rather than two of them, the, the, our initial plan shows two of them, but we were, we were thinking we might be able to make an argument. And the reason you need to have two is you always have to have redundancy. So you have one down, the, you have one. You don't. You still have a working plant, mm -hmm. and so that's why we have two clarifiers and multiple basins and two, two this, two that. Is simply for redundancy, so you don't have raw sewage uh, going down the, the stream. You've always got some level of treatment capacity, and so uh, we have been seeing with our clarifiers remarkable improved capacities. Uh, that that. Uh, uh, what may trigger it is when DNR says you're over your permit level, you've got to apply for a new, new permit. And when they do that and tell us that we've got to, uh, you know, uh, to add capacity, you know, even if our numbers are good, and our numbers have been really good, 
Um, uh, so it may be politics, that, that, you know, that when we, uh, and we do this, what is it, Donnie, every three years now, or uh, that we uh, we have to renew our permit every three, or is it five years? I can't remember now. I think it's three. That's what three I'm thinking, too. So every three years we have to apply for a new permit, and so they watch it. They watch it closely, and 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 it'll be maybe not so much as a a, a number thing, or you know, it's it's we're not we're not in trouble with our effluent limits. They're in really good shape, and uh, and so, uh, but we've got to stay there, <laughs> and comfortably so, and so I wish I could tell you, but things look good right now. Not gonna not gonna need it next year. I'm sorry for dragging that out. No, it's, I mean, the only, my only concern is, you know, if, if in the near future we were faced with a major upgrade to the sewer plant and all of a sudden we don't The rates aren't there. Money. Right. So that would be my only concern. I think it's important to remember that water and sewer funds can only be spent on water and sewer needs, so... Um, uh, you know, am I, am I what I'm am I, I don't want to speak for you, but what, what I'm hearing is, are you do you think we should consider doing the full increase per this the the uh, recommendation of Larkin Lamp or I, I'm just concerned that you know uh, how many years are we into the the new permit? the new permit. I'd have, I don't know that right off the top of my head. Um, I don't either. I'd have to check. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. I, I would just hate to see us all of a sudden. Gradual increases instead of a massive. Right. Yeah. Well, even when they do get to go through the new new permit and they tell us, they give us the the the, the directive, they will give us adequate time. They, uh, you know, it'll it'll be it'll be more than one year that they give us to be able to meet things because they understand uh, the situation. I think we've shown uh, good investment in our sewer plant in the past uh, several years. Absolutely. Uh, that that they w will respect and understand, and uh, and I, I and the numbers the, the numbers matter. And uh, so, uh, like I say, our affluent standards are are being comfortably met at this time. So um, I, I'm comfortable in recommending the increase that we uh, we have. I was more worried that you guys weren't going to approve this one, and, and I was worried when I when I heard those guys say we added a million dollars to the bottom line last year, I'm, I'm saying, well, that isn't what I see, you know. And of course, you <laughs> you got to understand those statements aren't, uh, weren't all, you know, what my numbers are. Uh, we had a good year last year, but we're not. We didn't. We didn't add nine hundred thousand dollars to the cash balance. We did. We did. Uh, we did. Bet, I mean, we did add a hundred and fifty thousand in cash uh, back to the cash balance of the operating fund. When we see, and then they add all these other funds together, and it, and uh, and. Uh, I, I guess I should have brought that up. It's, it's not all passion. unrestricted. It's, right. Yes, it's not all unrestricted. <laughs> Unfortunately. <right>. Yes. <laughs> so I want to. I want to make that point. Yeah. Is that uh, uh, man? If I had nine hundred thousand, I know what I'd go be fixing right now. <laughs> In the water and sewer. <laughs> well, I kind of like where we're at because um, I don't know exactly how many people in town have have been off uh, work this year because of COVID or whatever, um, just because I, I was an essential employee and it didn't affect me doesn't mean that there isn't many people that it did. And raising their water and sewer, which is something they have to have, is uh, kind of beyond their control. They're going to have to pay that. So um, I, I kind of like staying where we're at here and, and not raise the sewer when I do, if we can get by this year. And I think that's why it's it's, and I appreciate Jim pointing that out. It's key to point out that yeah. the, the fee portion stays the same right. as by yeah. use that would increase. Granted, it's still an increase. I understand. Now it's, it's just just water, not water and sewer. Yeah. So. so we are raising the sewer five percent, but it, it's not the full not 20. twenty. Right. Correct. Right. right. I'm saying. Well, and I'm I'm fine with this this year. I just wanted to, you know, just. 
make sure that we're not caught uh, in future years with a massive with a huge increase. Yeah, right. With a huge that increase will shock of them. twenty or thirty percent, and and then the seniors are really screaming because they can't afford that. But mm -hmm. And I agree with Dan that this year is is not the year to to go raising rates because of of COVID and and people out of work. I just wanted to get that out there that if this happens, that's a major major hit. So, any other questions or discussion <laughs> from the board? If not, uh, Jim, if you could read the proposed ordinance by title only, please. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, it's enclosed in 6A. An ordinance amending ordinance number 1395-2019 and the city code section 700 and section 720 of the city of Kearney prescribing the amount to be charged customers for water and sewer services. Let's entertain a motion for the ordinance. I make a motion to approve. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Second reading by title only, please. An ordinance amending ordinance number 1395-2019 and the city code section 700 and section 720 of the city of Kearney prescribing the amount to be charged customers for water and sewer services. Make a motion. Make a motion to approve on second reading. Second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Pull the board, please. Alderman Spencer. Aye. Alderman Holt. Aye. Alderman Lehman. Aye. Alderman Barger. Aye. The vote is unanimous, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, we have no old business scheduled for this evening, no new business scheduled for this meeting, so we'll move to Alderman discussion. Alderman Spencer. I think it was a wonderful holiday. The weather was fabulous. It was a great weekend in Kearney. Great. Alderman Holt? I don't have anything at this time. Thank you. All right. Alderman Lehman? I would just echo that uh, this weekend was, was great to be in Kearney. I noticed a lot of people out walking around and enjoying our trails, and, and I was one of those. And, and so uh, we were very blessed to have several miles of, of trails to, to be able to enjoy on weekends like this. <coughs> so. Alderman Barger? I have nothing. Thank you. I'll just add a few comments. Uh, I think there's pictures included of our West Booster Pump Station. Uh, so I'd just like to congratulate Donnie on uh, his first major project <laughs> that he's handled as our superintendent. So job well done. Well done there, Donnie, the you and your staff. And uh, those came out color pretty well. Hopefully all the, the kiddos in town had a good first day of school. Uh, if there is no other alderman discussion, can we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We are adjourned. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. And uh, David uh, Pavlich, he did join.